0800-863-0800-863. This is Today FM and it is Weird Tingly Wednesday. <gasps> Boy, if you have any, you know, like stories of things weird or tingly or sort of odd um, that have happened to you, please give me a call. 0800 Today FM, 0800 863 293. And have I got some stories for you coming up? But right now, Sam from Haunted Auckland has called 0800 Today FM for Weird Tiggly Wednesday. How are you, Sam? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. Well, it's Weird Tiggly Wednesday. Last week, weird things happened while I was doing Weird Tiggly Wednesday. Mm-mm-mm. So, how long? Tell me, how long have you been involved with Haunted Auckland? I've been with Haunted Auckland for. A- uh, since about 2013, I think it was. So, um, not not very long, but uh, long enough. Long but enough. Um, my interest in, in the paranormal has been a lifelong thing. How did you get involved? Um, funnily enough, I just answered a, a message on Facebook uh, requesting uh, new recruits. So, it was an interest of mine. So, I, I put my name forward, sent through like a CV of all my interests and... Uh, uh, Mark, who I believe you've already spoken to, replied and said, yeah. you're fit. Okay. And and w- as a child, were you kind of um, in tune with things? Um, I wouldn't say in tune, um, yeah. but I think it was one of those things that I, I've just always believed in. And, you know, since yeah. I can remember, the paranormal was just one of those interests. Yeah, um, yeah. Mum was always very, very kind about letting me watch horror movies late at night. And (laughs) and my older brothers would always try and scare me and say, hey, these things were based on a true story. And instead of scaring me, it was it was more of a drive to go and look up these stories and and see the the story behind them. Oh, wow. Have you have you had, you know, um, I guess, weird, tingly experiences? Um, Yes, I have. Probably not the, of the scary variety, but um, I, I do have a story that is quite near and dear to my heart. I'd love and to hear that. that. We'd we'd love to hear that. Love to hear you it. You would? Excellent. Yes. So when I, well, a couple of weeks before I turned 21, uh, my grandmother unfortunately passed away. Oh, uh, right. So she she was on her deathbed for for months and, you know, it was it was dementia and things that finally, you know, took her down that road. But uh, I would still write to her, and and um, she would always say, you know, thanks for writing me letters. I'm always going to remember you, and and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. If, so fast forward to my 21st birthday. Mm. Um. I was getting ready for the party as you do, and I was in my bedroom getting changed, and I see this letter propped up on my pillow on my bed, and it was in Grandma's handwriting. Mm. So I opened it up. Yeah, I'm getting tingles. And, yeah. It was it was dated on my birthday, but she had already died. And of course, it was it was a card, mm. which very notoriously my grandmother would would make all this artwork all over it that she used. Uh, you know, she made potato stamps and she would pull all these sort of flowers all over it. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a very very odd letter, and it, it spoke about the person that I'd grow up to be. Uh, you know, it would congratulate mm-hmm. me on my twenty first birthday. Yeah. Um, you know, it applauded me on on things like my daughter's name, which at 21 was she was still a twinkle in my eye. Yeah. Um, you know, and I didn't even think anything of it at the stage. But um, yeah, I, I turned to my parents and said, "Where did this come from?" And and neither of them knew anything about it. Oh, you're kidding um, me! No, nothing at all. And you know, it was my dad's mum. So yeah. He was quite taken aback by it, and he goes, "This is this is Mum's handwriting," and he goes, "This is absolutely bizarre." Oh my so, goodness. I've, I've always kept that letter. I still have it, you know, yeah. and it's very, very dear to me. Um, but it's just one of those really bizarre things that I can't explain, and no one knows where it came from. No, I find it interesting that because my experiences have also been with grandparents who've passed on, grandmother specifically who visited me when she passed away when I was living in Hawaii. And it was like, it's just a bizarre story. But um, it seems that often, and I'd wonder why it's grandparents, but there often seems to be a grandparent, grandchild experience when it comes to weird, tingly things. Have you noticed that? 
I have, and, and maybe that's something to do with, you know, they're, they're possibly missing out on things. There's things that they're, they're not going to see in their passing, and, you know, maybe they want to catch up, maybe they're looking over, and, you know, maybe there's that sort of protective parental sort of vibe going about them that they, they just want to still stick around. And maybe they have a maturity where wherever they are, they get a special pass because they <laughs> because they've had a good long That's life. Right, like, yeah. okay, you get a pass to go back and do something. I don't know. I find that really interesting because all of us that have spoken over the last few weeks have all had a grandparent experience. Yeah, it, it's very interesting, and and you know, it, and it's nice. I mean, not everything is is scary about the paranormal. No, um, gosh, no. No, and and the media might turn around and and make you believe otherwise, but no, it's, no. it's not all, all all doom and gloom. Oh, gosh, no! In fact, um, you know, my experiences have never been scary. They've been warming, if anything, um, weird, That's right, yeah. but warming. Except when it's gone into houses where I've gone, oh, okay, I shouldn't be here. Um, yeah, I think I'm coming with you guys to King Seat, which we would I'm love that. Forward to. Well, my, I, I've told I've told you, and you might know this, but my grandfather died. My grandfather yes. um, died in King's Seat, so I'm very interested to come along. And I know it's Spookers now, and I know lots of other people have rented the place and bought the place and stuff, but it's still what it was, and there must be a lot of energy there, right? That's right. I mean, a lot of, lot of old energy, and also, you know, as theories might suggest, with a lot of people getting excited with Spookers, there'll be a lot of new energy as well. So mm. hopefully, hopefully if theories are right, there's, there's some sort of charge to the place. Have you be, have you been before and done and done work there? I I haven't myself. Not to the to the actual spookers part of the building. I've been to the maximum security side, which is right. now a paintball. Um, and that's wow. that's a it's a very interesting place. I mean, I always get even just a chill driving down the driveway towards King Seat. I'm getting and, teary you know, just thinking about it. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm getting teary. Yeah. It is that long drive going to, and you see the nurses building in in the in the front of you, and you know the mm. long drive going. Just imagine what people were feeling as they were being dropped off there. I know, and I know that for some people it wasn't a great experience, but I think it was a savior, a savior for others. You know, like that's right. Yeah, a lot of people now don't have. Um, do you do you feel like? You must go to a lot of places. What would be the place where you felt the most, like, when I say oddness, you know what I mean? Like perhaps supernatural stuff happening? Uh, there's quite a few, actually. Um, mm. There's Howick Historical Village, um, the Pūnui House there, which is one of the, the, the bigger buildings there. Um, we were lucky enough to, to do some solo investigations there. And, you know, when you're staying in a building, big building by yourself, yeah, it's it it's a, it is a a real test to your to your strength and and yeah. being able to be there. You know, every every other noise that's not you could potentially be something else. Yeah, and Ooh. and you know, for all, for all of us that did do those overnight investigations, um, we all heard something. You know, we, we would sleep in the uh, on the living room floor, and you could hear people walking around, footsteps, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I heard a strange noise like marbles being rolled down the, the, the hallway. And, oh. yeah, it, it is a real a real test to, to think that, you know, it, it's not me, so what is it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's crazy to, like, go, no, I'm going to shut myself off from this. Like, be open to it. Like, yeah. who knows, yeah, Be right? very open to it. Who knows? I mean, no... No one's immune to those sort of jump scares, but I mean, even admittedly, by myself, when when there's rooms at night, with when there's there's no lights going, you know, I'm still going to take a torch and just do do that uh, Chuck Norris sort of kung fu <laughs> through the rooms. <laughs> yeah, just, just just to protect myself. You just never know. You never know. Um, with your grandmother's letter, um, and yep. she mentioned, you know, your future children. Did you take that on board? Not, not at the time, um, yeah. but you know it spoke of of a daughter, which I do have, um, yeah. and I've got two stepsons as well. Wow! Um, and you know she she did say something along the lines of she liked the name, which I, I never even thought of a name at the time, and yeah. um, and you know it, it's those sorts of things that, that never made sense at the time, but you know as 
time goes by, they they make a lot more sense now. Mm. And and the funny funny thing was also with the daughter was that I put that letter in in a box in a wardrobe, um, forgot about it. I mean not yeah. forgot about it, forgot about it, but just yeah. put it away. And the night that the night that I brought my daughter home from the maternity ward, the same letter fell out of the wardrobe. No, so, you know. It, it did, it did, yep. Mm. I mean, you could put that down to coincidence or untidiness, but, you know, did I, you I, listen I could to take her? it as a sign. Did you yeah. listen to her suggestions? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And, yeah, d- definitely something that, you know, I'm, I'm going to carry on and, and think about for the rest of my life, obviously. Yeah, um, for sure. Well... I look forward to coming with you guys. I almost feel, you know, it's weird. I guess maybe because I had my grandfather, who I never met, who was a wonderful man, but had been through war and been through a lot in his life, pass away at King's Seat. I almost feel like having spookers and paintball there is almost for me like not offensive, but, well, I hope if anybody's still kind of like around that... They're enjoying it and not offended by it. Yeah. You know, from, on the yeah. other side. Yeah, well, I think I think the people that work there are um, aware of the history, and you know, everything's right. done w- with a, a level of respect. Oh, um, good. So, I mean, yeah, I guess it's up to the individual as well how much offence they take to it. Yeah, I, I, I'm just looking re- really looking forward to it. So, I guess we'll see you soon. Look forward to it. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for your time tonight. No worries. Thanks for having me. Take care. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Polly.